Now, welcome to SMD Executive Academy. In today's class, we'll be learning Coulomb's Law. So, we have a question here to solve. So, the question is coming from a WIKE past question 2005. So, I'll explain what a Coulomb's Law states first. So, what the Coulomb's Law states is that it's stating or is explaining to us that there is a force of attraction or repulsion between two objects. So, we can have an object this way, whereby we have objects one and object two. So there's a force of attraction or force of repulsion between two between these two particles having a charge of q1 and having a charge of q2 so these two particles can attract or can they can also repel depending on the type of charges they are so if we have a positive charge here and you have a negative charge here there will be a force of attraction between the two and if you have a q you have a positive charge here and a positive charge here that will be a, a force of repulsion. So, there will be repulsion between the two charges. What does Coulomb's law now state for us? So, the Coulomb's law states that the force of attraction or repulsion between two charges is directly proportional to the product of their charges Q1, Q2 and inversely proportional to the square of their distance apart. So, the distance apart is this. The square of their distance apart and the product of their charges. This is what is stated. So having a proportional sign here, which is needed to be turned into an equals to. So how do we turn this into an equals to? When we remove the proportional sign, then we have to bring in a constant of proportionality. So that becomes F is equals to K, Q1, K times Q1, Q2, all over R squared. So having this now, this K is a constant value. That has the meaning which k is equals to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught 4 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught so this is equivalent to this and it's always constant you'll be given in every question you're, you're asked to solve now we have a question today and this is the formula we're going to use to solve the question so i dictate the question is in the white physics past question year 2005 it states that an electron is at a distance of 5.0 times 10 raised to power minus 11 meters away from the center of a proton. Calculate the electrostatic force on it. Now we're given the we are given the electron charge to be equal to one minus 1.6 times 10 raised to power minus 19 coulomb, and as well we are given the charge of proton to be equal to plus 1.6 times 10 raised to power minus 19 coulomb. Now, for us to be very quick with the solution, we are going to write the data out. Now, we have the data this way. Let's write the data here. So, we have, we are given um, the, 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 the distance between the two, between the two particles, R equals to 5.0 times 10 raised to the power minus 11 meters. We are as well given the charge of electron, Q1. Let's Q1 represent charge of electron minus 1.6 times 10 raised to the power minus 19 coulomb then we are given Q2 let Q2 represent the charge of the proton which is plus 1.6 times 10 raised to the power minus 19 coulomb as well as we are given the constant 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught is equal to 9.0 times 10 raised to the power 9 newton meter square per coulomb square so these are the information we are given so we're given this information to solve for the force of attraction between a proton and a neutron, a proton and an electron. Now in chemistry, we have understood that the, an atom is made up of electron, proton, and neutron. Let this be my nucleus. In the nucleus, we have the proton, then we have electron revolving around the nucleus. So there is the proton is the positive charge, and the electron is, a, is having a negative charge. So there is a force of attraction because they are having opposite charges between them and which creates a distance r and that's what the question says. So the distance r happens to be 5.0 times 10 raised to power minus 11 meters. So that's the distance between the proton at the center of an atom and the electron. So now we have this. The next thing we need to do is, that, okay fine, let's get the force of attraction between the proton and the electron. So F would then be equals to recall we have the form we have the formula to be equals to to be F equals to one over four pi epsilon naught times Q 
q1 q2 over r square so the k here is what we have substituted to give us this now having add this now then we replace those formulas we substitute this formulas back into the um they will substitute the value of the formula of these parameters into the formula now we say f the force of attraction will be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught was given to be 9.0 that's 9 times 10 raised to power of 9 multiplied by q1 and q2 now you look at q1 q2 they seem to be the same 1.6 1.6 but because of the sign there they are different so i'm going to i'm going to use them to be one so that would be 1.6 times 10 raised to power minus 19 raised to power 2. so what i did there was q1 q2 means q1 multiplied by q2 but in this case they are having the same values so i'll just make it q times q that's q squared so i picked one of the value i placed it here and i put a power of square so i'm neglecting the sign we already know it's the force of attraction so i'll neglect the sign here all over r squared what is the distance between the two charges that's a uh, r 5 times 10 raised to power 11 minus 11 5 times 10 raised to power minus 11 so we we'll continue our calculation so then we we'll then say we use the indices here so the square of this will be 1.6 square and times 10 raised to power minus 19 square so we have force of attraction equals to 9 times 10 raised to power 9 multiplied by 1.6 we give us 3.2 if you square 1.6 you have 3.2 then if you square 10 raised to power 19 we have 10 raised to power minus 38 all over 5 times 10 raised to power minus 11 whole square as the distance between them now we continue and we say f equals to so we multiply by using the index form 9 times 3.2 then times 10 raised to power 9 times 10 raised to power minus 38 all over here we have the square of this to be 25 times 10 raised to power minus 11 that is minus 22 we have there so f equals to now we have 9 times 3.2 we should be having 8 the um points so we have a remainder of 1 9 times 3 that's 27 plus 1 that's 28 if i'm not mistaken that's 28 yeah okay 1.6 we have here have to be square not 1.6 times one that was that, that should be 1.6 times 1.6 so that should be that shouldn't be 32 that shouldn't be 32 so let's just use it straight so 1.6 times 1.6 we should be having so 2.3014 after let us say 1.6 squared so 1.6 squared that's 9 times 1.6 squared then here becomes 22 so 9 times 1.6 squared we have 3 2.3014 2.304 rather we have 2.304 then times 10 raised to power 9 minus 28 so 9 minus 28 is that 38 that's 38 so 9 minus 38 over 25 times 10 raised to power minus 22 so finally we have f equals to we have 2.304 over 25 times 10 raised to power 9 minus that's minus 21 is that 21 no that's 20 38 120 so that's 29 so 29 over then this is that 10 raised to power minus 22 so we're going to use it as index from there so we have f equals to 2.304 over 25 2.304 over 25 that's giving us 9.0.92 in approximation times 10 raised to power this become 10, uh, this becomes 10 raised to power minus 29 minus minus 22 so there we have 0 0.9 point is that point nine two times 10 raised to power minus 29 plus 22 so from there we have 0 0.92 times 10 raised to power minus 29 plus 22 that gives us minus 7 so obviously we can't even answer this way until it becomes 
9.2. So we bring the decimal here, then we, are, we, are, we subtract it here. So that becomes 9.2 times 10 raised to power minus 8. So since we calculated force of attraction becomes Newton. It becomes Newton. So that's 9.2 times 10 raised to power minus 8 Newton. Has to be the force of attraction between the electron, el between the proton rather, which is positive charge, and the electron, which is negatively charged. Manage, manage my bad.